Welcome to a Grace Digital presentation. In this video, we discuss angels on assignment. Have we been missing out on God's amazing help and His protection simply because we haven't wrapped our hearts fully around the reality of angels and their ministry to us as believers? Hebrews 1, 13-14 To which of the angels did God ever say, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? What a great promise from the Father to assure us that because we are saved and now His beloved children, we will never have to face life on our own. To have spirits assigned to minister to us implies that we really do need help in different areas of our lives, even if we don't realize this. These angels have been equipped with the strength to help and shield us whenever it is necessary. God has angels that are on assignment even right now, but the question is, do we believe in their existence or their ministry? For everything is unto us as we believe. Matthew 9, 29. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith be it unto you. But just in case we think seeing angels doing God's work in our lives is a blasphemy or celestial worship, then Jesus' life here on earth reveals the opposite to us. For example, when the devil tempted Jesus repeatedly in his 40-day fast, he overcame the devil by the word. Thereafter, he needed strength, and the Father promptly sent his angels to do just that. Matthew 4, 9-11 All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. And even when he was about to be arrested, he told them expressly that he had the ability to ask God to send angels to shield him. But he wouldn't, because the scriptures had to be fulfilled concerning his crucifixion. Matthew 26, 53-54 Do you think I cannot call on my Father, and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? It is important to note that angels work in line with God's will and the word of His command, so we must be lovers of the word so as to know, believe, and speak God's word to His angels. Psalm 103, 20-21 Praise the Lord, you His angels, you mighty ones who do His bidding, who obey His word. Praise the Lord, all His heavenly hosts, you His servants who do His will. Let's study intensely different moments when God sent His angels to strengthen, deliver, protect, or help His chosen people. Just like Jesus, Elijah needed strength to go on in his assignment. At one point, he felt drained, but God's angels were sent to strengthen him. 1 Kings 19, 4-8 While he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled forty days and forty nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. A very notable angelic intervention was when the three Hebrew boys were thrown into a fiery furnace just because they wouldn't bow down to the king's idol. But when God's angel stepped in to do the impossible, everyone was commanded to serve their God. Daniel chapter 3 And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what god will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. 
Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual. So these men, wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, Weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, Certainly, your majesty. He said, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair on their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command, and were willing to give up their lives, rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble, for no other god can save in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Their marvelous testimony of deliverance was a manifestation of Psalm 91, 11-16. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. God specializes in sending his angels to deliver his people, even if it's at the last minute. Remember the story of Daniel? He had just one night between life and death, but God's angel came in to rescue him right on time. Daniel chapter 6 Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself, and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel, and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments or music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. When the king arose very early in the morning, he went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel, and hath shut the lion's mouth, that they have not hurt me, for as much as before him I was found innocent. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him, and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his God. He also brought deliverance to his people at the point where they were to be humiliated by the king of Assyria by the ministry of his angels. 2 Chronicles 32, 17-22 The king also wrote letters ridiculing the Lord, the God of Israel, and saying this against him, Just as the gods of the peoples of the other lands did not rescue their people from my hand, so the God of Hezekiah will not rescue his people from my hand. Then they called out in Hebrew to the people of Jerusalem who were on the wall, to terrify them and make them afraid in order to capture the city. They spoke about Levites. the God of Jerusalem as they did about the gods of the other peoples of the world, the work of human hands. King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, cried out in prayer to heaven about this. And the Lord sent an angel who annihilated all the fighting men and the commanders and officers in the camp of the Assyrian king. So he withdrew to his own land in disgrace. And when he went into the temple of his God, some of his sons, his own flesh and blood, cut him down with the sword. 
So the Lord saved Hezekiah and the people of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, king of Assyria, and from the hand of all others. He took care of them on every side. Isn't it great that God doesn't just send the host of heaven, the armies of the loving God to fight and win our battles, but also to lead or guide us to His purposes that await us? Exodus 23, 20 See, I am sending an angel ahead of you to guard you along the way and to bring you to the place I have prepared. God's angels also help us reap in the huge harvest of those that are ready for salvation. Matthew 13, 37-39 He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man, the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the ministry of your angels. Thank you for caring enough to provide help, direction, and protection to me through these ministering spirits. In the name of Jesus, I draw grace from your Spirit to put my angels to work by my words, my faith, and my prayers in Jesus' name. Amen.